Hi, welcome. Today we're going to learn how to use pivot tables in Google Sheets. Um, this process will be really similar if you use Microsoft Excel, but um, for this class and just in general, I tend to use Google Sheets these days. Um, so pivot tables are a really powerful way to get summary data out of raw data. So what we have here is, is raw data, right? This is data from the um, Washington Post Fatal Force database, which looks at police shootings in the United States. And we have data here that starts on 1-2-2015 and goes down to 8-18-2021. Um, so this is, you know, people that were shot by police in the United States in those years. This only goes about halfway through 2021 because that's when I pulled the data. We've got 6,509 rows in this database, well, 6,510 representing 6,509 um records, right? Because we're subtracting one row, which is our header row up here. And basically, you know, this is raw data, which means that each row of data represents one entry into the database, right? So each row represents one person that was killed by the police. We have a unique ID, the name of the person, the date that the incident happened, the manner of death, how they were armed, age, gender, race of the victim, uh, the city and state where it happened, if they showed signs of mental illness, threat level, if they were fleeing, if the police officer was wearing a body camera, the lat long of where the incident happens, and, and, and that's basically it. Um, so what we can do with pivot tables is we can create what's called summary data based on this raw data. And summary data is what we'll often use in our visualizations. Um, so th this will, pivot tables will essentially allow us to extract meaningful numbers from raw data that's, that we'll then use in, in our visualizations. Um, so if you know how to sort and filter in Google Sheets and then you add pivot tables and um, conditional statements on top of it, you can really do a lot in, um, you know, with tabular data in, in a spreadsheet program like Sheets or Excel. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So we have this raw data, and I'm gonna go ahead and create a pivot table to create some, some summary data. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna to go to um, insert pivot table, and this pop-up will appear, and it's just grabbing my entire um, table, which is what I want. And I wanna go ahead and insert it into a new sheet, which is the default. Now hit create, and it'll pop open a new tab, and this is the um, interface for a pivot table. So what we can see here is we've, we can work in rows or columns. And um, what we have over here on the right is every column of our database, right? We can see the name, the date, the manner of death, everything that we had in the, um, in the database. And we can drag these different um, you know, aspects of our database over to this side here to create our pivot table. So let me show you what I mean. So the first thing we're going to do is just create like a really simple pivot table that shows us, um, that breaks down the data by race. Okay, so we'll grab this race um, option here and we'll go ahead and move it to columns. Um, actually, let's go ahead and move it to, you can see with, you know, with if you put it in columns, it's going to put the values across the top. Here we want to put it, we'll put it in rows just because it'll be a little bit easier for us to see. So what this does is it basically grabs every value that appears in the race column um, of our data. So there's some blank entries. There's an A for Asian, a B for Black, H for Hispanic, N for Native American, O for other, and W for white. And now we can um, figure out exactly how many entries are marked with each of these values. Okay, and we can do that under values here. So I'm going to grab the unique ID um, option here, move that down to values. And I know that there's a unique ID for every um, every entry in our database because I added it, right? So um, this is a, a safe thing for me to grab because I know that it's not going to count anything twice. So we can see it's giving us a sum of unique IDs, which isn't exactly what we want, right? Um, what this is doing is taking each of the unique IDs, one, two, three, four, under each race and adding them together. What we actually want is a count. We we'll use count A. Um, and so now this is showing us um, how many entries there are in our database that fall under each of these categories, right? So there are 106 um, Asian, you know, 106 Asians that were shot by police in this time. 673 of the entries were blank for race. 
1,549 for black, et cetera, et cetera. And we, can, we can tell that we've done this correctly because if we go down to grand total, we can see it's counting 6,509 total entries, and, and that's how, ma how many we have in our database, so we know that we did it right. So we can now sort this, right? Let's sort it, um, let's sort it by the count, and here we can see, um, let's, we'll do it by descending, right? So we can see that actually the race that appeared most in our database was white. 2,962 um, people killed by police whose race was white, 1,549 that were black, et cetera, et cetera. So this is interesting, right? You may have assumed that um, black was going to be the biggest, there were going to be more black people that showed up on this database, right? Because we hear that black people are killed more often by police. Um, but in fact, if we're looking at raw numbers, white people are killed more often by police in the United States. So does that prove that police shootings are not disproportionately affecting black people in this country? Right, no, it doesn't prove that. And, and why not? If we were in class right now, I, I would ask you why not, and um, I'm asking you over the video, why, why does that not prove it? And go ahead and tell me to your screen. T talk to your, your computer right now and tell me why does that not prove it? Um, and the reason, of course, is that only 13% of the population in this country is black. Um, so let's go ahead and figure out what each of these numbers represents as a percent of this number here, and we'll and we'll be able to tell um, we'll be able to answer that question a little bit more clearly. Okay, so I'm going to add a new column here that I call percent, and I'll just write a little quick um, formula that'll that'll add percent here for us. I'm going to say equals b two divided by B, so that, so that I want to take my count here and divide it by my total, right? The part divided by the whole times 100 is how we figure out percent. So I want to do that. Um, I want to pull up B9, but I'm going to type it in sort of this weird way where I'm going to put um, these dollar signs before B and before 9. And what that's telling Google Sheets is that as we move down this row, um, I always want it to compare each of these figures to B9, right? I don't want it to move off of B9 as we move down. If we didn't put that as we move down here, this would also move down, okay? So I'm going to say that times 100, okay, and um, I can pull that down my whole sheet. Okay, right, so now here, and we can tell we did it right because um, we get down here and we're looking at it being 100%, and of course that's um, correct. 6,509 does indeed represent 100% of 6,509. Okay, so back to our question, right? We can see that 23.79% of the people in our database were marked, that were killed by police were marked as black, yet only 13% of um, the population of the United States is black, so therefore um, police shootings in this country are disproportionately affecting black people. Okay, um, so you know we can do a lot more with pivot tables. This is a pretty a pretty simple pivot table. I'm going to go ahead and delete this uh, percent column. So you know we could add more factors here. We could add in as much stuff as we want and try and make more complex pivot tables and try to answer more questions. So in this case, why don't we look at manner of death? Um, why don't we just pull that in under the row? And what it's going to show us is it's going to add those values underneath each race, right? So there's only two values for manner of death in our database. It's shot or shot and tased. Um, and so this is going to show us under each race. Um, so here, you know, it's showing us, okay, here's white people total, 2,962 of those 2,962, 143 people were shot and tased versus 2,819 were shot. Right, so we can bring in whatever other values we want to sort of break this information down in smaller and smaller chunks um, using our pivot tables. We could also do this in a slightly different way. Um, we could drag manner of death down to filter, if I can get it down there, there we go. And now um, I could show just the people that were shot and tased, right? And it's gonna show us the count of people under each race that were shot and tased. Or I could look at just the people that were shot, 
right? And, and, and that's if we just wanted to look at one or the other of those values and we didn't need to see um, both of them. So filtering can also be very useful. Okay, now I want to look at a slightly more complex example here. So let's just get rid of all these and we'll look at something a little bit different. Um, so what I'd like to try to figure out now is the average age of um, the average age of men by the type of weapon that they were armed with when they were shot by the police, right? So you see how we can ask a much more complex question and use pivot tables to answer that. Okay, so let's try to do that. So first we're gonna um, start with gender. We'll go ahead and add that to row. And that's just gonna show blank male and female. And we'll go ahead and, um, you know, we'll, we'll bring down our unique IDs now into values so we can see numbers. Okay, so out of the 6,509 shootings in our database, the vast majority of them, uh, of the victims were men, few were women, 287, and two of them were the gender was not marked in, in the records. Okay, so, you know, again, I could add manner of death down under here, and it would, it would break this down by shot and tasered, um, but I don't want to do that this time. What I'm going to add is one called um, armed. What this is going to do is for, for unknown male and female, it's going to drop. You can see there's the female, and I'll close that, and we'll see the male. But it's going to show us every weapon type that someone was armed with, um, according to our database, and how many times that showed up, right? So um, there's all kinds of stuff here. One woman was armed with a baseball bat, three with an axe, 129 with guns. Then we have all kinds of different you know, gun and car, gun and knife, hammer, hatchet. Um, the, the male ones get even crazier, air conditioner, bar stool, uh, binoculars. So anyway, these are all the different um, weapons that people were armed with when they were shot by police and the number of times that they show up. But let's say we didn't want to look at, we're not looking at, at the number, right? We want to look at something different. So let's get rid of unique ID and instead let's drag age down under value. And we don't want to look at sum, we can actually look at average, which is going to take the age for each of these and it's going to average it. And so now we can see, let's look at men since there's so many more of them. We can see the average age of um, men that were killed by police who were armed with a gun was 38 years old, right? The, Average age of men that were armed with a crossbow was 49 years old. And so we can actually see, you know, for instance, like um, the different weapon types and what age people tended to be when they use them, right? So a little bit more of a complex question. All right, so now let's take a look at, um, at this by state. So let's drag state over into our rows. We're gonna see every state in the union here. And we'll drag our unique ID down to values, okay, count A. So this is gonna show us what, how many, um, how many people were shot by police in, in each state between 2015 and like halfway through 2021. And we'll go ahead and look at this by count and we'll look at it descending. And here's what we see, that the most number, you know, the highest number of people were killed in California, Texas, Florida, Arizona. Oh, wait a minute. This is interesting, right? So these just happen to be what? The biggest states in the country. So whenever you um, start looking at something from a ge geographic perspective, um, and you see something like California or Texas or Florida pop up at the top, you need to start thinking, oh, so is this really showing me anything besides just where people live in the United States, right? So these are the biggest states. These are where the most people live. So, you know, it, it makes sense that the most of pretty much anything happens in these states. Um, so this isn't really great data, right? But there is a way to fix it. How do we fix it? Please, please talk to your, your screen and tell me. That's right, we normalize the data, right? We can look at um, each of these numbers. You know, we can look at killings by police per 
let's say 1,000 people. Okay, and, and that'll give us a much more accurate um, example. Okay, so um, I just so happen to have a spreadsheet here that looks at population estimates in 2019. Um, but there's a problem, right? We have our states here are listed by state. Um, and what we have here are abbreviations for states. And it, we'll go ahead and go back to state. And look at it ascending. And these are not in the same alphabetical order, right? So Arkansas, Alabama, all, already it's wrong. Right, so um, this isn't we can't just copy and paste it over. Um, but I also just have happened to have another sheet where I already did that for us. So we have um, we have this alphabetic alphabetical by state abbreviations. Okay, so what we can do is just copy this, and we will move it, paste it over here into our pivot table. Oops. And I'm going to go ahead and leave this. We got state. We got pop. Okay. I'm going to leave the state here for a minute just so I can do some double checking to make sure all my um, everything matches up. Yeah, looking good. Just doing some quick spot checking here to make sure we don't have any issues. Yep, 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 yep. Beautiful. Okay, so I can go ahead and delete this column just to get it out of the way. Okay, so now what I can do is I can look at um, you know, how many cases there were per, per 1,000 people in each of these states. And to do that, I'll just do a little bit of formula, a little formula. So I'll just say per 1,000 people. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to say um, B2 divided by C2 times 1,000. Right, so we're taking the part, dividing it by the whole, and timesing it by 1,000, which is the number of people that we want to look at. Oops, I have to put an equal sign before that. Okay, now I can just copy that down. And this is a little bit different now, right? We're going we're gonna to see things are a little bit different. And I can't exactly sort because this pivot table is still um, connected to, you know, this UI over here. So what I can do, I'm just going to copy all this. So if I'm just... I'm going to copy it. I'm going to start a new tab. And then I'm going to do something called paste special, which basically I can like paste the value only, right? Which takes away all the formulas and the pivot table and all that kind of stuff. So I can just look at these numbers that I've calculated, um, which is very useful. Okay. And I will freeze that. Okay. Now we can look at these per 1,000 people numbers, our normalized numbers. And we can sort. And we can actually see that New Mexico, Arizona, um, or I'm sorry, Alaska, Oklahoma, and Arizona are the top states for police killings, right? So very different from what we saw before, where actually California is pretty far down the list. It's at like number 24, not at, not at number one. Okay, great. So let me just go ahead and label that. So that's by state per 1,000 people. Okay. Okay, so what I'd like to do next is figure out police killings by year. And we'll have to, let's take, go back and take a look at our data. So we have a date column, which is useful, but what we don't have, we don't actually have a year column. So our date column is D. So we can't actually do a year without adding a new column to our data. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and add one, add a column to the right, and I'm gonna call that year. And I'm just going to do a really simple formula that will calculate year for us. So I say equals year, and then I just put in the column. And as long as that's a, that column is formatted as a date, this is going to go ahead and pull the year out for us. And there we go, right? We can just do a quick spot check, 2019, looking good. Twenty. Okay, seems like it worked. Great. So now if we go over to our pivot table, let's see if that, yep, that appeared automatically. So I can, let's go ahead and delete all this stuff, move all this out of there. And so now I can drag year over into row and unique ID down into values, look at count A. And we can see, I mean, right away, we know we can throw out our 2021 value or, because it's only half the year. So it's not really telling us anything. Um, but let's look at count A, sending, right? So not looking at 2021, 
we can see a couple interesting things. I mean, first of all, the highest number of people killed by police was in 2020, the year that we were all stuck inside for the pandemic, which seems kind of strange. And also we can see that this number appears to be going up every single year, not by a lot, but, um, but by a little. So that, that might be something interesting to look into a little bit. Okay, so that is pivot tables. I'd like to show you guys how to do um, one more thing here, which is how to use conditional statements, if-then statements, to extract even more out of, out of your data. So let's go ahead and add a new column here to the right. And what I'm gonna do is write an if-then statement that will tell us if a police killing happened before or happened after George Floyd was killed by police on May 25th, 2020. So I'm gonna call this column Floyd, and I'm gonna write a conditional statement here. It says equals if, so if, I'm gonna say D2, which if you remember is our date column, if the date um, is less than, if it's before the date 2020, five, 25, so that's May 25th, 2020, when police killed George Floyd. Um, then put before in that field. And comma, otherwise put after. Okay. I'll copy that down. Okay, so because our spreadsheet is in out in um, you know order date order right now chronological order, it's gonna be pretty easy for us to test this one, right? So before before if we go down to the end, it should all be after and somewhere it's gonna you know right around May twenty fifth, twenty twenty, it goes from before to after. Yeah, so that looks good. Great. So now we're you know now we could. We could do all kinds of stuff, right? We could grab, you know, we could do some filtering here and grab just the data that um, happened after George Floyd was killed and look a little bit more closely at that, um, et cetera. But what I actually want to do is I want to control Z back and I want to change this conditional statement here to make it even more interesting, right? We can ask multiple questions in an if then statement to get even more information. So maybe I don't, maybe I want to know I want to isolate out of my data all the black men that were killed by police after George Floyd was killed. So let's go ahead and do that, okay? So we want to say, we want to add a little, actually, let's just go ahead and get rid of it so you guys can see how it all works, okay? So we'll say if, here we're going to do and because we're going to have multiple statements. So we say if D2, and here we're going to say if it's after date, 25th, and I2, which in this case, let's take a look at, I is our race field, right? So I want to say if I2 equals B, then type yes, indicating yes, this person was black and killed after George Floyd was killed. Otherwise, type no see if that works for us. Okay. So we'll say, I'm going to change this to say after Floyd and black. Okay. Okay. So everything should, if we did this right, everything should be no until um, about halfway through 2020. Okay. And now we start seeing some yeses pop up. So let's just double check. So yes, this person was black afterwards. Okay, so the next two should be black, should be yes, 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 no. Okay, looks like it's working. Okay, so now we can do even more with this. Right now, for instance, we could filter this for between yeses and nos, and we could run pivot tables on that, right? We could look at just the men, just the black men that were killed after George Floyd was um, killed by police and start looking at them to see, um, you know, start looking at call pivot tables to look at different information about that data set, right? So combining pivot tables, conditional statements, filtering, sorting, et cetera, can really let you do a lot. Okay, one last thing. I wanna show you guys how to write an if-then statement that uses a regular expression. Um, so if you remember, when we looked at our um, 
armed field earlier, right? There was gun, but there wasn't just gun. And in fact, let's pull up in our pivot table. Let's pull armed over so we can see some of these things. So, okay, there was gun, but there was also BB gun, gun and car, gun and knife, gun and machete, gun and vehicle, which makes it a little tough if, for instance, pellet gun, for instance, if we wanted to do some data work that looked at police killings of people who were armed with guns, right? The fact that gun has sort of been separated into a bunch of different categories. But we can solve that by using something called a regular expression. So we can basically look, um, right, a conditional statement using regular expressions that looks at this armed field and tells us um, every time the word gun is mentioned at all. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. All right, so I'm gonna just call this gun. Okay, and we're gonna write a conditional statement that says if, and then I'm gonna say regular expression match F2, which is our armed field, has the word gun in it at all, Oops. Then write yes, otherwise write no. Okay, so here, right away, we've got our top two are yes, next two are no, and then yes, and then no. Okay, so let's look at, so gun, gun, right. So we can already tell it seems to, it seems to be working, right? So now this would allow us to isolate just though we could filter on this column just for the yeses and then we could do pivot tables or other sort of analysis to look at um, people that were armed with any type of gun if we wanted to. So now you guys will practice this on your own. I have an exercise for you to work on. Um, but I wanted to talk a little bit about how I learned how to do this. How do you guys think I learned how to do all these if-then statements? If you said Google, you are 100% correct. Um, do you think I have these memorized? I certainly do not, right? Um, you know, when working in spreadsheets, the best thing to do is to sort of have an idea of what's possible, right? Now you understand how pivot tables work. You understand some of the power of um, conditional statements, of regular expressions. Um, and you, you know, it's, it's, so then when you're looking at your data, you can decide, okay, this is what I'm trying to do with this data. And then you can sort of figure out how to do it through Googling, right? I don't have all this syntax memorized. When I was preparing for this um, video, right, I did a lot of Googling to try to figure out all the specific syntax. Um, so the important thing here to really is to understand how these things work, and then you can Google for whatever you're trying to do. I also have a Google Sheet cheat sheet that is available to you that goes through a lot of the things that we've learned um, you know, to the basic functions we've learned how to do with Google Sheets, for instance, how to calculate totals with sum, how to calculate average with average, how to calculate percent, how to do pivot tables, and how to do if-then statements, okay? Um, and this is available to you. It's linked in Elms. You can also just email me and ask me for a link to it if you're having any problems finding it. Thanks so much.